is David with Liberty Suppressors. What I want to do today is go over a little something with everybody that we seem to be getting this question a good bit, so I figured I'd make a quick video about it. Um, what I've got here is I've got the trusty MMP1522 with a, a Kodiak TL on it. And I've got some ammo in the magazine here that's going to demonstrate a point. Alright, this little rifle, if you'll notice, is quite loud. Now, that's because the ammunition is what is known as high velocity or supersonic. Due to the speed of the bullet breaking the sound barrier, the bullet in flight is making all of that noise. Because if you slow the bullet down to just a little under that sound barrier, it sounds like this. Notice I'm getting the bullet cycling. I don't know if the camera's picking up bullet impact on the berm at about 100 yards. The gun locked open. The difference in those two ammunitions was about 100 feet per second on bullet speed. Um, that's what you have to understand when you get your brand new silencer and you're brand new to suppressors and all of this and you go and you get your, your gun that you've just got ready for it and you screw your silencer on it and you shoot it and it sounded like those first five and you say man this thing sucks it's loud it ain't the silencer as you've seen the silencer's working fine what we have is is the bullet breaking the sound barrier generating its own little noise signature called uh, well our in-house term is the sonic shockwave when it breaks a sound barrier it generates that that sonic shockwave that's chasing the bullet down range trying to catch back up with it and as long as that bullet is supersonic, it'll continue to generate that, that noise. Once the bullet slows down, that shockwave will, will re overtake the bullet. And once it goes subsonic, it'll quit producing that sound. Um, there's no known technology to suppress that sound. The only way you can suppress it is to use subsonic ammunition. Now today, I was using CCI standard velocity. Standard velocity is actually listed on their carton at 1,070. And... It varies from location to location, but that's right at the speed of sound. But as you've seen, it's subsonic in this rifle, and that's a 16-inch barrel. So, we use it a lot. That's everything we meter with and everything. We almost use it exclusively here at Liberty. We do use the high velocity as it's a little more economical for um, testing. We baffle strike test every silencer that passes through our facility. Excuse me there. Uh, to make sure there's no assembly issues we'll put every one of them on a host weapon and run at least two cartridges through it a sample from every batch possibly two samples depending on batch size will be randomly drawn and we sound meter them to make sure they're still in accordance with our specs and we've had a lot of issues with people well you know that don't understand so i wanted to demonstrate that and that way I could steer people to this video rather than trying to type it into emails and explain it. You know, it, it's come up quite a few times in the last year or so. And, and it just occurred to me I could shoot this video and I could just make, make it a whole lot easier for everyone to understand. Um, so if there's any questions about the subsonic versus supersonic, you can give our sales team a call. The phone number's on the webpage. They'll be they'll be happy to explain it to you. But we're at 1,440 feet of elevation, give or take, right here at the test range at Liberty. And at sea level, it could be a different bullet speed. So the speed of the bullet breaking the sound barrier will make that sonic crack, as some people nickname it. The bullet going less than 1,050, give or take, feet per second, won't make that sound because it never breaks the sound barrier. Now, there's another phenomenon where it's right on the edge, and you know, I think they call it transonic. I'm not real sure about that. But it, it makes a, it's almost a sonic crack, but it ain't quite. It's almost, it's kind of an annoying noise that's happening in flight, 
but it ain't exactly that real sharp high pitched crack. Now, had you been down range when I fired this gun, somewhere off to the left or right, not in the actual path of the bullet, when the bullet went by you, it would have sounded like, uh, I've heard it described as a lady finger firecracker, you know, you get it as the bullet passes by. And that's that sonic crack, that shock wave going by your body on the way through flight. It doesn't sound the same as it does from the shooting position where it echoes off of the berm. If we didn't have all this reflective material here, it wouldn't have echoed near as much. It would have just been a, it would have just been a simpler, and it would have kind of faded real fast. When we did testing out in large open fields, the sonic crack is not near as prevalent as it is here where I'm surrounded by pine trees and I've got a, a 13 foot dirt berm 100 yards away and things like that. So just to let everyone know that different ammunitions and ammunition that claims to be subsonic sometimes depending on your host weapon won't be. Just, just be ready to try two or three brands to make sure that it is the, the ammo or the gun combination, or it might not be. Um, some guns have a slightly tighter bore than others, tighter chambers that generate more chamber pressure, and more chamber pressure equates to more bullet velocity, um, things like that. A tighter bore will build more pressure, so more back pressure will equate to more velocity. Once it's in motion, it'll pick up speed faster. Now, typically shorter barrels will have less velocity. In a 22 rimfire, with regular high velocity ammunition, we found between four and a half and five inches, depending on the gun. If you if you bob that barrel off, so pistols fall into that category in a hurry, you can stay subsonic with high velocity ammo because the bullet hasn't passed down the bore far enough and it hasn't built enough pressure behind it to push it to the supersonic speed yet. So once that bullet breaks the seal with the barrel, that's as fast as it's going to go. It won't, it won't go any faster from that point that seal breaks, it's starting to slow down. So if you can break that seal soon, soon enough, you can use the cheap high velocity bulk ammunition and it'll stay subsonic. Hence, people shooting it on P-22s and little Ruger Mark IIs with four and a half inch barrels and things like that, and it stays subsonic, sounds real good. Um, now, it will run a little hotter because you do have just a little bit more gunpowder to deal with there, but the, the can heats up more. So you'll have a little mirage in your sight picture. But on a 16-inch carbine, or like, for instance, um, Caltech makes a 22 rifle that's got a 9-inch barrel. Um, Thompson Center makes um, pistol barrels that are like 10s and 12s and stuff like that for their encore break actions. Um, Ruger makes target barrels that are 10 inches long for their Mark III. So, you know, you can get... You can get pistol barrels that'll exceed that six inch mark real easy, or I find, excuse me, the four and a half to five inch mark. Um, the six inch target guns, they're almost assured to go supersonic. It's that once you pass that point, you've got the speed. So if you want to keep your gun subsonic with cheap ammunition, you could register it as a short barrel rifle and cut it off at four and a half inches, which we did with a couple of our 22 rifles. And, and, that, and that keeps your bullet speed down so you can shoot the economical bulk ammunition and it stays subsonic. The, the long 16 inch barrel guns will need subsonic ammunition for maximum performance. That doesn't hurt them to shoot high velocity, but it'll be quieter if you shoot subsonic. And that was what I was wanting to bring up today. If there's any questions about any of this, feel free to give us a call. We, we're on the web, www.LibertyCans.net. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.